I want you to look at it because it tells somebody a passion for souls. A passion for souls. A passion for truth. A passion for truth. That's the talk for today. A passion for souls. A passion for truth. A passion, a strong feeling of enthusiasm or excitement for something or about some or about doing something. A strong feeling of enthusiasm. Or excitement for something or about doing something. A desire, if you have a desire, a desire failed, a desire fueled by passion will bring about greatest results in life. I want to say that again. A, de a desire fueled by passion will bring about the greatest results in life. And the passion that you have, the passion can push you through difficult times. Amen. Because you don't care what it takes to become better. Amen. That's how I do that. Amen. Passion can push you through difficult times because you don't care what it takes to become better. How many of you have a passion today? Hallelujah. You can have that passion. No matter how much you desire things, you don't want to sit on that desire stool and don't have a passion for it. Passion. Somebody show passion. Passion. Jesus Christ from the scripture that was read in St. John 10. We're going to get into those other scriptures. Just want to show his passion. He's our example. St. John 10, verse 8 to 13. His passion should be our passion. Yes. In his day, there were so many people that came before him, before he was born of the Virgin Mary. So many people testified that they are the Messiah. Just like today, you have a lot of people believe that they are the Savior. Amen. If you are with me, I will save you from. If you leave me, you will never make it. Ever meet some, we don't have them here, but there will be some people that they believe that you're, if you're not in their life, that you are going to fail, yes. you're going to just go down and down and down. Uh, but the devil is a liar. Hallelujah. Mm. Jesus said, all that ever came before me, they are thieves and robbers. But the sheep, did not hear or did not listen to them. You got to be very careful of who you are listening to. Amen. Because people, amen, will minister into your ears. And if you're not careful, amen, you can fall into a posture of hopelessness. Yes. Amen. I'll tell somebody, don't lose your passion. Don't lose your passion. Whatever you do, don't lose it. No matter who walk out on you, don't lose your passion. No matter if you get laid off, don't lose your passion. Amen. Amen. Don't lose your passion for the truth. Amen. Good God. Amen. Jesus said, I am the door. And by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. In other words, no man that came before Jesus and no man that came after Jesus can save anybody. Jesus said, I'm the only one. I don't care about the other religions that are looking to their Buddhas and looking to the golden calves and looking to their, amen, all of these, what they call gods. Amen. They, mean they can't save nobody. He said, if you come to me, you shall be saved and you shall go in and out and you shall find pasture. Now look at it. The thief. Saints of God, and don't just minimize the thief just to a devil. Look at people that are in your life that are killing your spirit, killing your dreams. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. You don't raise your hand on this, but do you have anybody in your life that want to destroy you? Want to destroy your faith in God? Want to destroy your passion, want to destroy your business. 
He come into your life, but she come into your life to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I come into your life. Mm. I am come that you might have life. And that they might have it more abundantly. Good God Almighty. I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Look at this. But he that is at highly, we're going to explain highly because a lot of people that are standing in the pulpit and in the podium, amen, they're hired people. He that is at highly and not the shepherd, good God Almighty, whose own the sheep are not. In other words, some people don't care anything about your soul. They don't care whether you are saved. They don't care if you're going to hell or going to heaven. They care nothing about your soul. All they care about is what you can give them. And the moment you stop giving them what they need, amen, then they push you aside and find somebody else. Amen. Oh, God, thank you. He that is a hireling and not the shepherd, Whose own the sheep are not, see it, the wolf coming. I want you to visualize that. The wolf is coming. Mm -hmm. He will leave the sheep and flee. He will run. And the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. Let's bring that to today's meaning. They will see danger ahead. Saints of God, if somebody loves you, they will protect you from the wolf. Amen. Amen. Oh, God, they will protect you from the dangers, amen, that are coming. But if they don't love you and your back is turned and a big wolf is coming behind you, they will not want to let you know it's coming because they want to see your demise. Oh, God. You might have some people in your life and you believe, amen, that they want you to prosper, but they want to see your demise. Amen. Y'all too young for that. Wait until you get about 55 years old. You'll understand, amen, that everybody around you is not for you. That's it. Go back to the verse right there. He that is an hireling to our leaders, and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not. See it, the wolf coming and leave it the sheep and flee it, and the wolf catches them and scatter it the sheep. Say to God, in this life, you better be very careful of who you call your friends. Amen. Mm. Because a friend will stick closer to you than even your own biological brother. Amen. A friend will fight for you when you're down there in the trenches. Amen. Oh God, somebody help. Amen. A, a friend will come to your aid at midnight. Amen. If you call them. Amen. A friend will not turn off their phone on you. Amen. Because a friend indeed is a friend in need. God, thank you. The hireling flee it because he's a hireling and care it not for the sheep. Uh, that person in your life, will that person fight for you if you're going through? Will that person even put his or her life on the line and, and roll up their sleeve and get into the ring, amen, and fight that devil with you? Can you call a person at midnight and say, come on and pray for me, amen? I, I need some prayer, amen? I need a deliverance. I need a lift. Can you try an extra 10 miles or 20 miles to go to the assistant of a friend? Will they do that for you? Look at Jude chapter 1, the third and the fourth verse. Jude, right before Revelation is Jude. Mm, Jude. Do have one chapter? The third verse reads, Beloved, when I gave all diligence, I, gave, I was so eager to write unto you of the common salvation. Yes. 
that was in my mind. It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. When you read that verse here, why the apostle? Why you say, I was so eager to write about you, about salvation to you. But I'm writing to you to let you know, contend for the faith. Why? Look at the verse 4. For there are certain men crept in our other ways. Certain people crept into your life, into the ministry, other ways. Who were before of all ordained to this condemnation? Way before you were born. They were assigned, amen, for that. Good God Almighty. It's the one thing about the enemy. The enemy in your life will not come into your life with a sign on his forehead or a sign on his back to let you know that is the enemy. The enemy will creep into your life unaware. In other words, you're not even aware that that is the enemy. That's why you have to use strong discernment and discern who is who around you. They crept in other ways because they were ordained, amen, from way back for this condemnation. He called them ungodly men. Turning the grace of our Lord God into lasciviousness. Ungodly men misrepresenting God and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. There's a verse in the third chapter of St. John. We know verse 16. For God so loved the world yes. that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. God don't want his children to perish. But a 17th verse of St. John, the third chapter, I wish we could get that on the screen. Amen. St. John, the third chapter, 17th verse. Look at what the Lord said. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. What is condemnation? When somebody condemn you, they're telling you that you're on your way to hell. There's no turning back. When somebody condemn you, they say to you that there is no hope for you. That is not the reason why Jesus Christ came into this world. All of us were hopeless without God. Amen. Oh God, man, we were all sinners. But while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now that you are a child of God, amen, the devil wants you to believe that you don't deserve the blessings of God. Amen. They were crept in unawares. You have to listen to the messages that some people are speaking into your life. You've got some folks out there. God has really delivered you from the curse. And you've got some folks out there and they say that you're on the curse. They want you to believe because you're sick and because you don't have the finances that you have is because you're cursed. Saints of God, you are, you have been delivered from the curse. Amen. Oh, somebody help me please. Uh, in Galatians, the third chapter, hallelujah, verse 13. Let's go to, you all ready for Bible study? Yeah. All right. Give me Galatia, the third chapter, verse 13. Amen. We're going to come back to those scriptures. I tell somebody you have been delivered. You have been delivered. Come on, tell them with some power. Tell them with some passion. You have been delivered. You have been delivered. Oh, God, thank you. You are delivered. You might face some challenges in your life. You might be going through some things, but you're not under any curse. Amen. No hex, no, 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 what do they call these people? No devil can put a curse on you. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at what he said. This is Jesus' word. This is Bible. Christ had redeemed us. From the curse. From what? From the curse. From the curse of the law. Amen. When did 
look at the book of Deuteronomy, you read those curse. When you're cursed, so when you're cursed, everything is falling off your tree. You know? All the fools, everything is not coming to maturity. Now you're a child of God. If you're facing challenges, watch out for people that are telling you that you're under the curse. No. If you're, if you're telling people that you're under the curse, you are saying Christ did not do a complete job. And what Christ did for you on Calvary was not enough. Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Give me verse 14 there. Look at where you are right now. That a blessing of Abraham, what God pronounced upon Abraham and his seed, those blessings, because Jesus Christ is the seed of Abraham. And because you're put on Christ, you are the seeds of Abraham. The blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Amen. Right now, you're joined here with Christ because you're connected to Christ. What Christ has belongs to you. Because you're connected to Jesus Christ, amen. You have been delivered from saints of God. If you have been threatened by anybody and they say they're going to put a curse in you, you just let them know, amen. It cannot work on you. That's right. Ah, cannot. Somebody help me preach it, amen. It cannot work on you. They might walk around your house and try to sprinkle some stuff, amen. Don't even listen, don't even watch them. Amen. If I just say about the blood of Jesus this morning, amen. You plead that blood, amen. You don't have to put no blood over your doorpost anymore because Jesus Christ already paid a price for you. Yeah. Tell somebody, I am delivered. I am delivered. They can't curse you because you're delivered. Go back to Jude, verse 4. Give me that verse 4 again. Mm. Jude chapter 1, verse 4. Okay. Certain men crept in other ways before all ordained to this condemnation. They are ungodly men. Turning, look at what he's saying now. <coughs> Turning the grace of God into lasciviousness and lustfulness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Misrepresenting God. Jesus. And you have a lot of folks out there that are misrepresenting God. And they want you to believe, amen, that because you are still human, you can lie down in the bed with them. You can still go and do certain things with them, but the devil is a liar. Hallelujah. You can do all things through Christ. Amen. You are strengthened, amen, to be a godly person. Amen. Look at Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. Look at what the Lord is saying to us. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Where we are living to the saints of God, where you're working, amen, in some of our neighborhoods, we're in the midst of wolves. People that want to see your demise. Good God Almighty. But be wise as serpents, harmless as doves, amen. Know your surroundings. Know who is for you and who is against you. Not because you are saved. Amen. Not because you are saved. That don't mean, amen, that God is going to take you out of this world, amen, and just place you in a place where all saints are. You are living among wolves. Your neighbor is a wolf. Some of you, hallelujah. Your boss, some of you is a wolf. Hallelujah. Sometimes you have wolf in your house. Yes, that's it. You're too safe. Uh, sometimes you got a wolf right in your house. They want to devour everything that God is doing in your life. Uh, you're too young for this, but for some folks, Brother Patrick, 
Some folks will go to church and they're full of joy. They're so passionate about the Lord. But when they go home, Jesus. God Almighty, their faces are wolves. They don't have anyone to share their joy with. You're not too young for those things, amen. Because they don't want to share their joy. Somebody in their house, amen, is going to pour some salt right in that joy. So what you do, you let out your joy and you find some folks. And you get on your phone and you share some joy with them. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, share some joy with somebody on the outside. Amen. Jesus said, if you go into a house and they will receive you, shake all the dogs. You may not have to leave, but, amen, but share your joy with somebody that's going to appreciate joy. Oh, or somebody help to praise God. Hallelujah. Tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Because it's all that I have. The world didn't give it to me. And the joy that I have, don't let no devil take it out from you. Somebody shout joy. Don't call it, thank you. Hallelujah. I send you for the sheep in the midst of wolves. He send us. That's it. He send us. That's where we are. In the midst of wolves. Right there. The highly will see the wolf coming. Oh, but don't see nothing. But you are aware of the wolves around you. Amen. Like Mr. Luke, amen. you are aware, amen. amen. They come in the water devouring you, amen. amen. But when they come one way, they're going to bring seven ways. Oh, God, somebody help me praise God. Hallelujah. When they believe that you are going to be down, you're praising God. When they think you should decide, you're clapping your hands. And you say, glory, glory, hallelujah. Since they lay my burdens down, I feel better. So much better since I lay my burdens down. You feel better. Burdens down, Lord. You still smiling. You see, your life will place. You see, before, before you get that strong, amen, they used to say things that get you down. Yes. And they crawl into your bedroom. And they shut your door, amen. And you're in there sobbing. And they're all there laughing. But now you walk into your house. And they say those things, it doesn't bother you anymore. I will prepare a table in the presence of your enemies. When they thought they was not going to eat that big the pork chop, amen. You're going to a refrigerator and you put it in the frying pan and you're eating it. Hallelujah. When they thought, amen, that you was not going to sing another song, amen, you begin to sing your song. Hallelujah. You sing your song and you dance around the floor to let them know that no matter what they say, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Can you tell somebody confuse the devil? Confuse him. Confuse the devil. Look at Romans 16, 17 to 18. That's it. Now I beseech you, brethren. That's all right, no. Now I'm begging you, brethren. Mark them which cause divisions. Mark them. Good God Almighty. Mark them. Don't be no ignorant person that don't. don't. This is some people see you and they think that you don't know. But you know. You see, when they mark somebody, you're not going with a person to put it in your mind. <laughs> You know me, Jamie? You know mine. Yes, yes. Mark them which cause divisions. Yes. Even in our business. Yes. Right. Some people come in there. Yes. Amen. Right. Not to compliment what you're doing, but to bring you down. Yes. And they think that you don't, you, you don't know you what's don't know. going on. Yes. Why is that a serpent? That's it. Because you know by this time. There should be already complete certain things. So they look around the corner, and when you're driving up, they get up, and they pretend that they're so busy, and they're moving fast. But they don't know you're involved there. 
because the assignment you gave them, that should have been completed long time ago. Oh, God, somebody have a praise God. That should have been completed long ago. How do you do it? I'm fine. They don't know they're marked. <laughs> okay, just a matter of time. Hallelujah. Because you're going to tell them, that's all right. Thank you for your service. Hallelujah. Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the teaching which you have learned. I want to avoid them. <laughs> Some people say it's because they don't want confrontation. They don't know you're just avoiding them. Yes. You don't have time for that. Amen. You don't have time to get you no know, confrontation. You don't want to be engaged in no conversation because you know it's just a matter of time. Yes. Matter of time. Avoid them. Avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, when they're serving the Lord, amen, we're going to see it in your actions. That's it. Right? Amen. Not just talking about it. But a whole lot of people can talk. Yeah. All when they're sleeping, they're talking. Yeah. <laughs> they can talk, amen. But you got to do something. Yes. They that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but they serve their own belly. You meet some folks and What's in there for me? What do you mean what's in there for you? Let's serve God and let God bless you. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. They serve their own belly. And by good words, look at it. You, you know what they call smooth talkers? Yes. It's as if their lips are greased up. <laughs> smooth talkers. Amen. Amen. By good words and fierce speeches, they deceive the hearts of the simple. And that's where the simple is, the naive. Amen. They deceive them, but they are ungodly. Good God Almighty. The Lord said, mark them. And look at your woman. That's woman 16, right? Yes. And look at St. John 14 and 6 now. Passion for souls. And a passion for truth. I am the way. The truth. And the life. The Lord had this. You remember doubting Thomas? Give him verse 15. Give him verse 5 of that same scripture there. Verse 5. Look at Thomas. Thomas wanted to know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Lord, we don't know where you're taking us. We don't know all these things that you're talking about us. Thomas, how can we know the way? And verse 6 says, Jesus said on the head to Thomas, I am the way. I am the truth. Get a passion for me. Yes. Hallelujah. Get a passion for the truth. And the, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man. No man. To the Muslim, you can't get to Jesus. You can't get to the Father because amen, you recognize Elijah Muhammad. It's not going to work. To the Mormons, amen, you can't get to the Lord because they recognize Hare Krishna. It's not going to work. Good God Almighty. To the Hindus, you can't get to the Father because you have a cow as a God and a grasshopper as a God. It's not going to work. Mm -hmm. Good God Almighty. Mm -hmm. I am the way. Yes, yes. Everyone that come before me that teaches and robbers, and everyone that come after me and want to say that they are the way, they teaches and robbers. You got some people telling me that believe that there are many ways to go to the Father. Mm. And have all of these new age stuff. Yes. And Scientology and all of this stuff out there. 
And we're living in a world right now where people believe that their opinion yes, is yes, truth. Yes, yes. If that makes you happy, that must be true. We are living in a world now where if a man says that he's a female, you they want you to accept it. All of these things are going on in the world. And what is true in India, amen, that's India, and America have a different truth. I want to tell the world, amen, there's only one absolute truth. And somebody shout his name. Jesus. It doesn't matter who write books and try to believe that they are more educated than the Lord. Right. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Because I am the door, amen? Yes. You cannot go to the Father, you have to come through me. And when you accept him as your Lord and Savior, amen, you will go in and then you will find pasture. You will find his blessings. You, Saints of God, you cannot go around the absolute truth. Amen. And many people, amen, are living in regret right now yes, yes. because they held all the something that somebody taught them that they believe it was truth. Hallelujah. The reason why I explained the communion in detail this morning because some people misunderstand Amen. what it is all about. Amen. Hallelujah. You've got some people on television right now and they're, they're ministering, amen, from a posture, amen, as if they understand, but they don't understand. Jesus said, when you do this, you do show my death until I come. Amen. And I want you to do this as often as possible. Amen. Saints of God, don't let nobody fool you when it comes to God's word. Go and support. Philip now, Thomas was speaking to the Lord. But Philip wanted to get involved in that conversation. Go down to verse 7 and follow it. Hmm? If you had known me, you should have known my father also. And from henceforth, you know him. How many of you know the Lord today? Amen. You know the Father because you have seen Jesus. Now, go on some more. Mm -hmm. Philip said unto him, when Philip gets involved, Lord, show us the Father, and he sufficed us. That will satisfy us. Jesus said unto him, have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. How says thou then show us the Father? Mm -hmm. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but of Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. What God is saying. Saints of God, Jesus is God. Uh, can I go to St. John chapter 1? Go to St. John chapter 1 real quick. Can I get five more minutes? Yes, sir. Jesus is God. St. John chapter 1. Start of verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. It's still right there. We're going to read that again. In the beginning was the Word. Who is the Word? Jesus is the living Word. Now look at it. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. Mm-hmm. The same was in the beginning with God. Give me verse 14 now. That's good. Go back. Stay right there. All things were made by him, the word, who is God. And without him was not anything made that was made. Now give me verse 14. Now look at that. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, and he was full of grace 
and he was full of truth, passion for truth. Jesus Christ came to the Virgin Mary, manifest himself yes, yes. to destroy the works of the devil. Yes. Good God of mine. That's why he came into the world. Uh, give me St. John, uh, 1 John, the third chapter, verse 8. He came to destroy the works of the devil. And saints of God, we are going to stand, amen, for the faith. We're going to stand up for what is true, saints of God. If it's nothing else, that you're going to just stand up for what is true. And 1 John, the third chapter, verse 8. Have a little verse right there. That's the word. Amen. He that committed sin is of the devil. Mm -hmm. For the devil sinned from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And for this purpose. That's why he was manifested. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. That he might destroy the works of the devil. Amen. And saints of God, every devil world that's running rampant in your house, amen, you destroy them. Amen. Amen. Don't be a child of God and embrace devil works. Destroy them, break up the graven images, amen, kick them out of your closet. Hallelujah. Get rid of them because the Bible says righteousness exalted a nation and sin is a reproach to any people. Good God Almighty. Stop them from one rampant in your house. Stop the enemy even from misusing you as a child of God. Have a passion for souls for yourself and for those that are around you. And have a passion for the truth, a passion for Christ. Anyone that you're listening to, and they're not ministering God's word over your life, avoid them. Avoid them. Don't give your special ears to them anymore. Don't pay them, pay them no attention. Because you have a lot of people there who want to believe that they are the Savior. But they come into your life to kill, to steal, and to destroy you. Because the enemy is jealous of what God is doing in your life. He brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Don't you know some people are jealous of you because you're praising God? Amen. You gotta take it. Don't you know they're jealous of you because you put your faith in God and not putting your faith in them? Amen. They're jealous of you. But God is saying to somebody today, Hallelujah. That you must develop or continue your passion for souls and your passion for truth. Let us bow our heads. Lord, we praise your name. We magnify your name. We give you all the honor and we give you all the glory. This is a solid moment for somebody. Somebody wants to be lifted. Somebody's crying out to your father. Somebody, Lord Jesus, need restoration in their joy, in their love for you, in their passion for you. Lord, we thank you that you are in this place, Lord Jesus, to fill us again. The Lord is saying this is a filling station for somebody. Just like you go to the gasoline station to fill your car up, this is a filling station today for somebody. So Lord, as we come before you today, we come, Lord Jesus, saying, fill us, Lord. Fill me up. Until I overflow. What are the words of the song? You provide the what? Fire. The fire. And I'll, and I'll provide a sacrifice. You provide what? The spirit? To open up inside. 
Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up. Fill me up, Lord. Until I overflow. I want to run over. So, Lord, we thank you. 